Hey everybody, welcome back. I wanted to come on and and talk about um, something that comes up with so many people that I talk to, so many people I work with. Certainly was probably the worst um, issue I had, one of the worst issues I had um, in going through this, and it was very confusing. Even being a therapist and knowing a lot about the brain and and how it works, um, I didn't I realized how little I understood actually about the nervous system and uh, the central nervous system and the threat response system. But I was, I want to come on and talk about again, inter- intrusive thoughts that, that and, and those can take the form of anything from, you know, looping intrusive thoughts about what if I don't get better? What if this gets worse? What if I go crazy? What if I die? What if I can't handle this to, Hey, why don't I love my kids? Why can't I feel anything? Why am I so disconnected? Um, ooh, or why did I have that weird thought about my loved one? Or why can't I stop thinking about the past? Why why is my past now so distorted? It can really glom onto quite any to anything. And whether you had anxiety or OCD before this, once your system gets tagged in this particular way, we can have these symptoms that kind of come as a result of this. Many people I talked to did have some sort of predisposition or some sort of mild form of something, whether they were a worry wart or a ruminator or they did have some mild social anxiety. Maybe they did have some, you know, mild obsessive compulsive tendencies, but a lot of people, you know, in some ways or or hypervigilance, but for a lot of people, they were, it was serving them. It was like a, it was like a tool to be hypervigilant and on top of things and controlling and all that kind of stuff. And and now it's like taking that, that vulnerability that again was somewhat high functioning and like really using it against them and weaponizing it. Um, so I want to think about this a little bit. Um, I, you know, I have somebody in my life that, um, they, for a job, they, they develop code, computer code. And I don't know anything about any of that. So I'm learning a little bit or trying to learn a little bit and understand what, the hell it is they do actually. But um, I, I think it kind of makes sense in something I can use. I'm always trying to like use examples, but as they were teaching me about it or telling me about it a little bit, I was, it made some sense to me in terms of what I think people that either have anxiety or OCD, anxiety in any of its forms, or just nervous system sensitization for whatever reason um, that might be applicable. So, you know, I always thought code was like ones and twos or X's and zeros or whatever, but I'm learning, I guess it's, it's ones and twos. No, no, it's zeros and ones. Eek. Sorry. I'm not very good at this anyway. So zeros and ones, right? So I want you to, but what she would teach me is that she would write words in a particular order that provided, obviously, I guess they were functions and the computer would translate these things into ones and twos or zeros and ones. Eek. Yeah. See, let's just say zeros and ones. I think that's right. Let's just going to go with that for right now. Anyway, it's going to translate things into zeros and ones. And that's what the computer code looks like. So I just thought she sat around all day and made a bunch of zeros and ones. And I was like, how the hell do you know what you're writing? It's just a bunch of zeros and ones. And she was like, no, I write words. But then the computer translates that into, into this particular, you know, binary, I think is what it's called code. Yeah, I guess I have more to learn. Anyway, so I thought about this from our perspective in terms of what's going on in our brains. And what I think is not happening in our brains is that our brain doesn't really care about the interpretation, the deeper understanding or figuring it out. So it's just sending us a bunch of zeros and ones. And those zeros and ones are basically its its code to us of danger, right? So it's like, okay, I'm going to send you this scary thought, this scary feeling, this scary sensation. Um, and, you know, we, like the computer, try to be like meaning-making machines. We need to translate that into our language, right? That's where we go wrong, though, as humans. We're recognizing, we're getting this code coming at us in, in, in zeros and ones. And it could be, you know... Uh, and again, the brain is not smart. The, 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 the nervous system, the limbic system is not super intelligent. It's just very primitive and very loyal. Its only job is to keep us safe. So it's sending us code. And where we're going wrong is instead of being like, yep, all right, there's another zero, there's another one, there's another zero, there's another one, we're interpreting it. 
into our human language. So it's almost like the opposite of, I think, what she does. So as we're interpreting it into our human language, we're thinking, wow, I just got a weird thought about my kid, or I just got a really strange thought about my health, or what if I'm never going to heal? What if I do something stupid? What if I, you know, what if I can't stop thinking this disturbing, disgusting thought? What if I am never the same? What if I, on and on and on. And that is where we go wrong. So as we're getting, you know, zeros and ones thrown at us, um, what we are, what we, where we go wrong is we tend to want to interpret. We are meaning making machines. That's what we are as human beings, right? We have things come through us and then we work to make sense of them. The problem is that in a hypersensitized, hyper aroused nervous system, whether that's in benzo withdrawal, medication withdrawal, whether that's people that have extreme anxiety and OCD, whatever it is, when you're dealing with that very sensitized nervous system, the way you are going to interpret those zeros and ones is going to be in a very distorted way. You're not actually going to interpret it properly, okay? Because if you were interpreting it properly, you would recognize like, oh shit, my brain's sending me all kinds of crazy stuff. And that's what brains do. Because guess what? In a person that doesn't have any of this, they're getting 50, 70, 80,000 thoughts a day. Some of those thoughts are like, what if I run that person over? Or I hate that person's voice. Or, oh, I hope I don't get a bad result from my medical test or whatever. But it, it doesn't come with this whoosh of anxiety. And even if it does, it doesn't stick very long. But the more sensitized we are, the more it sticks. The more it sticks, the more we think it has meaning. The more meaning we think it has, the more it's going to stick around because all that limbic system, all that amygdala, all, all that primitive system wants to hear is, wow, you know, Jennifer's spending a lot of time paying attention to this. She is really trying to figure out my zeros and ones. I must be doing something right. I better send some more. Okay. Cause again, it's only job is to keep us safe and it doesn't care if it's wrong. It, it, it has no pride. You know, it doesn't think, oh man, I keep sending false alarms. I'm wrong. No, it doesn't care. There's no ego there. It just keeps sending zeros and ones if you keep paying attention to the zeros and ones and trying to interpret that into your language. Okay. Remembering though, your language in a sensitized system is going to be distorted toward the, towards the negative and the catastrophic. And so the zeros and ones don't matter. But we tend to look at them and think, well, what does this zero mean? What does this one mean? And the more we do that, and the more we think, if I could just figure out that, that, that one, if I can just figure out that thought, if I can just figure out how to not have that thought, right? Sounds like a great idea. Terrible idea. Why? Because all it's going to do is going to send you another one. And this is where the content of anxiety, the content of OCD, the content of what a sensitized nervous system sends doesn't matter because it's a shapeshifter. It'll just glom onto something else. When this began for me years ago, when I first had my first real intrusive thought and I couldn't let it go and I spent months trying to get to the bottom of it because it had some basis in reality. It was a, it was a, it was a memory of something that had happened to me, but it was distorted. And I kept going back, making timelines and doing all this ruminative, you know, very obsessive, very compulsive kind of ba- these behaviors, if thinking if I could get to the bottom of it and I could just not think that thought again, I would be okay. The problem is a couple months later, it moved into something else. And I began tackling that one. If I could just get that one taken care of, boom, it just kept shifting on me. And it still does to this day. If I go down that path, If I get ruminative and I get really myopic and focused on my thinking and these zeros and ones, I, it'll start shape shifting on me. So everything we're doing is trying to kind of see the misfire, see the bluff for what it is. The bluff is the zeros and ones, this boom, boom, boom. And if it comes with urgency, right, that's a, that's a, that's a good signal that I don't actually like the word signal. If it comes with a whoosh of urgency or a whoosh of fear, that is good information that it's noise. It's just noise. It's zeros and ones that we don't need to interpret. Okay. It's, it's best to be left alone. Okay. Rather than I'm going to keep going, I'm going to keep going, I'm going to keep going. And then it, it shape shifts on us and our sticky minds, because the, you know, the more sensitized we are, often our minds are stickier. We're more suggestible. We've lost our confidence. Everything that's coming through is kind of sticking around. We have a negative confirmation bias and we are just catastrophizing. 
So, you know, I wanted to kind of come on and, and begin to speak about, okay, so, so what do we do about this? This, I, I just did a video on this, not that, just a couple of days ago, but I'll, I'll go back to it again. Um, we, as we see it for the bluff that it is, and we decide to leave it alone, we decide to not pick up the rope. So we've got the zeros and ones trying to lasso us, trying to get us to play tug of war. And our whole goal is not to play because in the realm of nervous system sensitization, in the realm of OCD, in the realm of anxiety, you will not win that game. If you play, you will not win. So the only way to win is not to play. And how do you not play? You leave it alone over and over and over again. No matter how distressing the image is, no matter how much of a whoosh of anxiety comes with that thought, no matter how intense and intrusive and repetitive it is, we simply don't play. We cannot afford to play because we will never win. So for many of us going through this, again, we have what we call like a naturalistic exposure. And what I mean by that is just living life is its own exposure. Life becomes very challenging for many people going through this. And the more sensitized you are, the more, the more um, reactive you can be, the more you tend to turn inward and again, get into this very compulsive reasoning, compulsive figuring out, I got to research more. I got to ask this question a thousand more times. I got to figure this out. I got to get ahead of this curve. I got to get rid of this thought. I got to get rid of this feeling. And the more we do that, you know, again, the the worse we get, right? Um, So again, we need to recognize that the content, the zeros and ones are not relevant. We don't need to make meaning of them. We don't need to figure them out. We need to leave them alone and see them for what they are. Bad code, basically. Just bad code that is not worth our time to interpret. So we, you know, when I've talked to you about my acronym DEAL, which stands for Decide, Evoke, allow and live. The decide is I know I've already decided that I'm getting some bad code. I'm sensitized. I'm getting lots of zeros and ones. It's not a code that I need to interpret. Okay. I'm going to evoke a non-engagement response. All that is, and we get really hung up on this. I know I did. I got to find the right thing to say to myself over and over and over again. No, it's not about having the exact right thing to say. It's about the, it's, it's a reminder of the mindset. I know I, I get I'm getting some bad code. I'm not playing because if it's not this, it's going to be something else. If I tackle this weird thought about my, you know, my family member or my health, whatever it is, if the more I dig in, the more it's going to just become something else. And so the E is evoke a non-engagement response. Uh, the, the ninja of indifference I get what you're trying to do. I see the bad code showing up on my screen. I'm not interpreting it. It's a waste of my time. It's bad code, okay? Um, Part of that mindset is also recognizing because you're in a highly activated state, a state of hyper arousal, you're in a surge. So a lot of times my non-engagement response was like, let it burn because it actually felt like I was burning. It felt like my brain and my body were burning with this reality and I needed to work to leave it alone. If it's not this, it's going to be something else. I'll leave it alone. The other thing that's really important to remember too is that, um, you know, we we kind of learn as we burn, if that makes sense, right? So the only way a nervous system that's in this state or a limbic system that's in this state can learn that it's sending bad code is if you don't respond to it, right? So even though we want our symptoms to go away, and that would be ideal that we just wake up, we don't feel anything. Okay, great. That's awesome. We just got a hall pass. But it's really when they're firing that we learn when we burn, right? Because when it's activated, we can then teach it something else. And we teach it something else by not responding to it, by not engaging, by leaving it alone. We are then teaching that nervous system, yep, you really are a false alarm. And I'm going to show you your false alarm because actually it doesn't hear words. If I say to my brain, I know you're a false alarm, just go away because I know you're a false alarm. All it hears is womp, womp, womp. Wow, she's paying a lot of attention. Versus we show it by reminding ourselves that and then again, allowing things to be there and then working to live our lives as best we can. So sometimes on my worst days, when I would remember, I'd be like, bring it on. And like, you're just going to make me a pro at this. 
you know, the, 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 the louder you are, the more shit you're firing at me today, you're just giving me that many more opportunities to leave it alone. I'm getting better at being a ninja of indifference. Um, so the terror you might feel in your body or your mind, all of it, the hammering thoughts, the surge of anxiety that, that comes and just stays with you, all of it, leave it alone. Uh, remember that your limbic system is magnifying and distorting and it's trying to get your attention. Okay. And these are noise. These are not signals. So you've got to decide that you've got to decide you've got raw sensitized nerves, nothing more. And that the code it's sending you is bad. Um, I guess one more thing is, I guess just to say, but it's kind of, I'm just kind of repeating the same thing here is that Again, OCD, anxiety, sensitized nervous system, all that comes with being in benzo withdrawal, all of that heightened, hyper aroused, angry, you know, it's like fumes off a fumes off a hot furnace, right? And it scans for anything. It's gonna be scanning because it's it's already because of the misfire, because of the neurochemical shitstorm, it's already feeling scared. It's already generating fight, flight, freeze responses, right? So then again, because we're meaning making machines, it starts scanning for anything to glom onto. So it doesn't like just having free floating fear. And that's why I said a teddy bear can become a grizzly bear because it starts scanning for anything. So I could be looking at a picture of my house in New Jersey that I had nothing but good memories of. But if I'm looking at it through the lens of a heightened state, I can suddenly see that house and have a creepy feeling about it. Well, then my brain wants to be like, well, that's weird. Why would you look at your house in New Jersey and have a creepy feeling? Did something happen there? Is something wrong with the house? Oh my gosh, let's go back. Let's go back and start digging around. Let's go talk to somebody about that. Shit, maybe I've got some trauma from that house in New Jersey and I got to go back. No, bad code. It's all bad code. It can glom onto things that you love, things that you care about. In fact, it will glom onto things that you love and things that you care about, including your sanity and your health. Why? Because again, it, 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 it's meant to keep us here and alive. And if it's misfiring and it doesn't know it's misfiring, it's just going to keep trying to find something new, new stuff, old stuff. It could tell you that you're a bad person. It can make things look dark, chaotic, out of control. Again, don't fight it. Don't avoid it. You know, don't get bogged down and think, oh my gosh, I can't stop thinking this. I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. You're just scared. You don't even have to talk about the content. You don't have to say, I'm scared because I keep thinking this thought. You can just say, I'm scared right now. I'm anxious right now. The content is irrelevant. I see what this is. I'm not playing. I'm moving on. So that non-engagement response that you're evoking, that E and deal, is simply that reminder of that mindset, that mental shortcut that says, I'm leaving this alone, okay? That this is irrelevant and it's noise. Um, anyway, guys, I hope that was helpful. I know it's a lot. Um, and there's so much more to say about it because there's also so many forms it can take. So I'll get people writing me saying, yeah, but this feels very real because it is something that I actually did in my past that I can't let go of, or this feels really different because, you know, it, it, I, I really do have an, an upcoming medical procedure, or this feels really real because, you know, I really am disconnected from my family. Right. So again, no matter what it is, um, it's meant to feel real. And our job is to degrade it. And how do we degrade it? How do we degrade bad code? Well, the best way to degrade it is just not to interpret it, not to do anything with it. Leave it alone. It's just zeros and ones. Anyway, hope this was helpful. I'll try to come back on and answer questions. Thanks, guys.